In this video, we'll look at how we can use the principles of probability theory to help us build machine learning models. Here is an analogy for the way probability is usually applied in statistics and machine learning. We assume some machine, which could be any process, the universe, or an actual machine, has generated our data by a process that is partly deterministic and partly random. The configuration of this machine is determined by its parameters, which we'll summarize with the letter theta. Theta could be a single number, several numbers, or even a complicated data structure. We know how the machine works, so if we know theta, we know the probability of each outcome, each data set. The problem is that we only observe the data, and from the data we want to infer the configuration of the machine. In frequent test learning, our job is to guess the true configuration of the machine. Remember that in the frequentist view of the world, the true model is not subject to probability. That doesn't change if we repeat the experiment, so we shouldn't apply a probability to it. We just try to guess which it is. This is typical of frequentist approaches. We build algorithms that give us a point estimate for our model parameters. That is, they return one point in our model space. There are various strategies for how we should choose this point, but one of the most common criteria is that we should prefer the model represented by theta, for which the probability of seeing the data we saw is highest. This is called the maximum likelihood principle. Under the maximum likelihood principle, picking a model becomes an optimization problem, as shown here. We are looking for the theta such that the probability of the data x given theta is maximal. When we express px given theta as a function of theta, it is called the likelihood. And this is the function that we want to maximize in maximum likelihood estimation. Technically, it's often easier to take the logarithm of the likelihood, which we call the log likelihood. Since the logarithm is a monotonic function, taking the logarithm doesn't change the location of the optimum. In Bayesian learning, we can talk about the probability of the true model parameters taking a particular value. We don't know the true parameters, but the data gives us some idea, so we express that uncertainty in a probability distribution over the model space. We are interested in the probability theta given the data, and to work that out we apply Bayes' rule, giving us the right-hand side of this equation. And the elements of this equation have the following names. The probability that we are interested in is called the posterior distribution, and the probability of the data given the model parameters theta is called the data distribution, this is what in frequentist learning is called the likelihood. The marginal probability on theta is what we call the prior distribution, and we can think of this as representing our uncertainty about the model before we've seen the data. This can be a simple uniform distribution over the model space, but if we have some prior knowledge about what models are likely and what models aren't likely, then we can try and encode that into our prior distribution. Note that Bayesian learning does, in principle, not require us to search or optimize anything. If we can work out the posterior distribution and represent it somehow, then we have everything we need. If we need a good model, we can simply pick the model to which the posterior distribution assigns the highest probability, or we can sample a model and get a good fit with high probability. We can also study other properties of the distribution to tell us more about the state of our knowledge. For instance, the variance of the posterior distribution is a good indication of how uncertain we still are about the parameters of the model. In some cases, like for normal distributions, we can work all of this out analytically. Given the right prior, we can work out a functional form for the posterior distribution from which we can read out anything we want to know. For more complicated models, it's usually impossible to work out the posterior analytically, and we have to make do with a function that approximates it, or with a number of individual samples from the posterior. We won't deal with pure Bayesian learning much in this course, but as I said previously, in machine learning the distinction between frequentist and Bayesian learning is not always adhered to religiously, and concepts from both are sometimes freely combined. To illustrate both of these approaches, let's look at a simple example. We have two coins, a bent one and a straight one. Flipping these coins gives us different probabilities of heads and tails. If we flip the normal coin, we get equal probabilities of heads and tails, and if we flip the bent coin, we get a higher probability of tails than of heads. We ask a friend to pick a random coin without showing us, and to flip it 12 times, and to tell us the results of those 12 flips. The resulting sequence has more heads than tails, 
but not by such a disparity that you would never expect it from a fair coin. If we had to guess which coin our friend had picked, which should we guess? This is a simple version of the model selection problem that we face in machine learning. Our model class here consists of two models represented by the two coins, and our data consists of 12 instances, the results of random draws from one of our models. We'll start with a frequentist approach. That is, we choose one of the models from our model space, which we think fits the data best. The maximum likelihood objective here tells us that we should choose the coin for which the probability of seeing this sequence is the most likely. So we are argmaxing over just two values, bent and straight. And in general terms, the argmax we can think of as picking a model in our model space such that the likelihood function is maximized. In our case, these values are easy to work out. Since the coin flips are independent, we simply multiply the probabilities of seeing the outcomes that we did see. As you can see, this gives us two values that are very close together, but for the bent coin, the probability of seeing the data that we did is very slightly higher. So according to the maximum likelihood principle, we choose the bent coin as having generated this data. There is a very strong correspondence between what we're doing here and what we've been doing so far to fit our models. What we've been doing so far is to define a loss function and to choose the parameters of our model to minimize the loss function. What we're doing here is taking a probabilistic model and choosing the parameters that maximize either the likelihood or the log likelihood. And we'll see that certain things, such as minimizing the sum of squared errors, can have a probabilistic interpretation. Let's look at one more example to see how this log likelihood can help us. In this case, we'll look at the maximum likelihood estimator for the mean of a normal distribution. The probability density function of a normal distribution looks like this, a complicated function. Let's see what happens when we try and maximize the log likelihood for the mean parameter of this distribution. We start by writing down the maximum likelihood objective. Note that we've put a logarithm before the likelihood. If our data set consists of multiple instances drawn from the same distribution, as it does in this case, the likelihood over the whole data set is the product of the individual likelihoods of the instances. Because of the way the logarithm works, we can take this product outside of the logarithm and make it a sum. And now we can fill in the definition of the likelihood. Since we're dealing with a continuous sample space, the likelihood is a probability density function. In this case, simply the function we saw on the previous slide, the probability density of the normal distribution. And in this case, theta is a pair of scalars, namely mu and sigma. We fill in the probability density function, which gives us this. And we see that inside the logarithm, we have a function of two factors which if we take them outside of the logarithm, becomes a function of two terms. Now, one thing we can see here is that our situation is very similar to what we've seen before in the pure machine learning case. We have a model space determined by two parameters, mu and sigma, and we have some value that we want to optimize. So every point in our model space, we can assign a color with points closer to the optimum, a lighter color giving us, again, something very akin to our loss surface. And in fact, in some cases, we can make this correspondence exact. Consider, for instance, the situation where we are interested in optimizing only for the mean. We keep the standard deviation fixed at some value and simplify our optimization objective. The first step is that we can remove the first of these two terms, since it is a constant, which gives us this. We can take this constant multiplier and move it out in front of the sum. And since this is a constant multiplier, we can remove it without changing the location of the optimum, which gives us this. So we're taking the maximum here of a function with a minus in front of it, which is equivalent, which is equivalent to taking the minimum of the negative of that function. In other words, we can remove the minus and change the arc max to an arc min. And with that, we have our old and familiar sum of least squares objective, leading us again to an estimator for the mean. Finally, let's return to our example of the straight and the bent coin and see how a Bayesian would attack this problem. We won't go into the details here, but we will give a brief outline of how it works on this example, just to give you a basic idea. First, we need to establish a prior. What is the probability of each coin in our model space? 
we'd said already that we'd asked a friend to pick a coin at random. If we assume that he follows our instructions, then it's very reasonable to believe that each coin is equally likely, so both get a 0.5 prior probability. If we had two fair coins and one bent one, we could set the prior to two thirds for fair and one third for bent. This is an important thing to understand about choosing a prior. If we don't know anything, we can go for a uniform prior. But if we do know something, it allows us to encode those assumptions about the problem. And as we saw when we discussed the problem of induction, these assumptions are usually what make learning possible at all. When working out Bayesian problems like this, it's often good to start with a marginal distribution on the data. This is the probability or probability density of the data with the models marginalized out. In this case, it's a simple sum over the two joint probabilities of the data together with the straight model and the data together with the bent model. We use the equation from slide 21 to break each of these up into a prior probability and a data probability. And once we have these two terms, we can write Bayes' rule as a simple proportion of each term to the total. The probability of the straight model being used is the proportion of that term to the total, and the probability of the bent model being used is the proportion of that term to the total. In this case, since we've used a uniform prior, all priors in this expression are the same, and they cancel out against each other, leaving us with a simple proportion in terms of the data probabilities or likelihoods that we'd worked out in the previous slide. If you fill in these numbers, you'll see that the Bayesian solution to the problem is this distribution for the posterior. As we see, both approaches in this case lead to very similar calculations, but whereas the frequentist approach gives us a single model, the Bayesian approach gives us a probability distribution over models. And this illustrates quite neatly why a posterior distribution is more informative than a point estimate. In the frequentist case, we would get exactly the same answer whether we observe this sequence of heads and tails or a sequence of heads only. In the Bayesian case, however, we can tell by the shape of this distribution that in this case, even though we slightly prefer the bent model, there isn't much in it, and we actually have a lot of uncertainty about which of the coins was chosen to produce this sequence. The downside of Bayesian analysis is that as the models get more complex, it can get a lot more difficult to accurately approximate the posterior, and trying to do so is what has led to some of the most complicated material in machine learning. In the next video, we will move to the more familiar abstract tasks of machine learning. Specifically, we will see a simple but powerful way to use these Bayesian principles to build for us a classifier.